Hello guys, this is Navin Reddy. So today we'll talk about one of the amazing subject or amazing programming language called as Java. Now if we talk about Java, it's a programming language which totally depends upon OOPS concept. Now as you know, many uh, IT courses include a, a part called as programming. Now basically this programming starts with C, then we go for C++, then we go for Java. And we, we have amazing technology called as .NET. Now, Many people compare with Java and .NET. See, both have their advantages, both have their drawbacks. Think about this. Now, if you talk about advantages of Java, it's a, uh, uh, you know, you can run this software on any platform. Let it be Linux, let it be um, Windows, any platform. If you talk about .NET, especially runs on Windows platform. Now, it means if you want to be a, a uh, Windows programmer, if you want to work, if you want to create a software which will work on Windows efficiently, go for .NET. Again, .NET provides some features which is which is better than Java, and Java has some features which is better than .NET. It's depend upon you what you want to be. You know, when when I, when I go for lectures, when I give some, uh, when I write some articles, so people ask me, I want to be a programmer, so either I should go for Java or .NET. My answer is depends, right? So if you have interest in Java, go for Java. If you have interest in .NET, go for .NET. But uh, as future trends, now if you talk about future of IT, a lot lots of people are saying that cloud will be the future because if you talk about Google, it's working on clouds. If you talk about Facebook, they have their own cloud. So all clouds, 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 and behind clouds we have Hadoop, we have uh, big data. So all this technology normally works with Java. So uh, I, I recommend normally Java, but if you want to be in Windows platform, Microsoft has also its own cloud server. So if you want to work in Microsoft, uh, if you want to go for Microsoft cloud server, go for .NET. It's amazing. Now, uh, question arises: how to start with Java, you know, uh, normally from C to C++, when you start with C, it's, it's quick, uh, complex, you know, uh, you don't know about programming anything, you, you, you're like a freshman and starting with C. So the first code, you know, they have, you have that addition of two numbers, then you have to print hello, then uh, finding a one odd. So to do the small, small parts, you have this programming and you're so confused why I need this programming concept to do addition of two numbers. I can use calculator and that's what you can create your own calculator afterwards. But if you know the basic programming palladiums and that's why you have the startup language called a C. You know, they start with C so that you can be friendly with programming because if you don't know programming and you're starting with Java, it's quite complex. So they start with C. After C, they, uh, they combine some OOPS concept. You know, you have this object oriented programming system into C. Like uh, if, you talk, if you talk about OOPS concept, we have objects, we have classes and classes. So if you have this C language, which is POP, which is procedure oriented programming and you add some oops concept you know you have if, if you add some classes in in c that becomes c with classes and that's what we have is c plus plus so earlier it was c with classes then we have this new name called as c plus plus but again c plus plus is not uh, purely object oriented because if you say object oriented it simply means you have to work with object it simply means you have to work with classes Everything you do in object oriented programming system is with classes or some block. But in C++, you have this amazing concept where you can write your main, main function out of the class. You can use those primitive data type, int, float, all these things. That's why C++ is not purely object oriented, but it's, it's amazing. Using C++, you can, you can do programming in OOPS concept, you can do programming in POP. So you have both the advantages. C, only POP. C++, both. You can work in POP and you can work in OOP. Then we have this amazing concept. You know, in 19, uh, 1991, we have this amazing uh, Sun Microsystem team headed by James Gosling. So they started with a programming language called as Oak. Then they wanted a platform independent programming language. So they named it as Oak Programming. But again, with that patent issue, all those things. So they changed the name from Oak to Java. 
And how to start with Java? Again, the way you learn C, the way you learn C++, you have to go for Java. You have to pick up a good book. First, you require a trainer, you require a good book, or you, have, you require lots of practice. Again, book is compulsion. You have to read, you have to use some book. Trainer is optional. So if you, if you think you can do it by yourself, go ahead. But if you think uh, programming is not that easy for you, you need a trainer. And you require practice. You require some good machine in which you have this good JDK installed and then you have to practice. Okay. Now to start again, uh, we have this amazing books. We can go for this com Java complete reference. Latest is 8th edition and you can buy it's on Flipkart. You will get discounts. I'm not promoting Flipkart here, but I'm promoting discounts. So uh, you can go for this second book I have here. This is head first. It's not Sublet and JSP, it's Java. So you have this another book called as Head First Java. Again, if you if you hate reading, read this book. You will love reading. You know, they have all these comic parts. You can see here. So you can see some comic parts. So it's it's fun to read. But if you are a you know a good reader, you want you like reading, you have this book. It says some uh, Java SCJP. So if you want to be a Java certified, you have to give an exam by Oracle. Now, this is old book. This is uh, Sun certification. But in uh, two years back, Oracle bought Sun. So now they have this new example is OCP or you can say OCJP. So earlier it was SCJP, which is Sun certified Java programmer. Now it is Oracle certified Java programmer. Content are same, cover changes. So uh, if you talk about this book, so if you want to be a Java certified, go for this book. If you want to learn Java, go for head first Java. If you want to learn, if you want to practice, again you have this book. So these are all questions for certification book. So if you, if you want to go for certification, we have some uh, objectives questions here. So again you have many internet resources to go for Java. But if you want some uh, some concepts to be clear, I have remaining videos. You can see that I have videos on constructors, I have videos on abstract classes. So you can see those videos to get your concepts clear. And uh, if you talk about what to read, how to read, start with the book. So you have to start with any one book. See two options, you can go for training or you can go for books. If you are going, going for training, so trainer will decide what to teach, what not to teach. So they have their own syllabus. They know what you should know, they know what you should not know. Right? Uh, then if you talk about books, books have all the content. So if you are going for book, bit difficult but not impossible. You have to start with book. Again, you can get, go for any book. I will recommend go for first Java, but because you, you will learn, you will uh, love learning, you will love reading and you will understand something. So if you go for that book, it has some uh, amazing syllabus. So it all starts with what is classes, what is object, then what is OOPS concept. Because if we talk about any good programming language, they all follow this OOPS concept. The OOPS stands for Object Oriented Programming System. Now if you know OOPS properly, Java is amazing. Java is easy, but if you are, you know, you are going through bad days with oops, then your Java is gone. Because to understand what is Java, you should know what is oops. And again, oops have this uh, four basic features. You can say inheritance. You have encapsulation. You have uh, you have this uh, abstract abstraction. So you have these concepts. So if those concepts are clear, Java is clear. Now give me one second. So what I'm talking about, you have this uh, four basic feature of OOPS. So you have to you have to learn those concepts, then you can understand Java properly. Then you have to understand some programming basics like uh, what is if condition, what is if else, what is switch case, what is uh, this uh, for loops, while loop, do while loop. You know, everything is different. Everything is different. So a lot of people say for loop, while loop, do while loops are same. Not exactly. For loop is different, while loop is different, do while is different. Output is the same. Again, lots of people say you will get the same output, but processing part changes. What exactly changes will have in next, uh, I, will, I will do a, a video on that for loop, while loop, and do while loop. But if you talk about switch case, uh, if else, now people say if you know switch case in C, if you know switch case in C++ you will understand switch case in Java again that's right but there are some difference between switch case of Java and switch case of C 
it simply switch case of C supports primitive data type switch case of Java supports objects so amazing then uh, we have uh, yeah then we have, after for loop, for loop you have to practice lots of things like uh, to for practice you have questions like find uh, this uh, factorial then you have to go for palindrome you have an Armstrong number so if you practice all this thing you know your for loops are clear your while loops are clear so you know the basic of programming you'll understand so once you understand the basics of programming then you have to go in advanced part like you have to work with uh, uh, these files you have to work with objects now you know we have many concepts we have to work with files where you can store your data in files not database you know not those relational database i'm talking about novel files that it be txt files those are also your database so you have to write some codes using which you can save your data in file so pick up data from user process it and store it in file so that next time when user comes he can retrieve the data from file okay so that all comes under file handling then we have this amazing concept called exceptional handling. See, if you talk about exceptions, we, we normally talk about errors. So errors of three types, we have compile time error, we have runtime error, we have this one, uh, logical error. If you talk about compile time error, so if you make any mistakes in running, uh, typing your code, like you have typo mistakes. So let's suppose you miss semicolon, you, if, uh, instead of typing uh, main, you, you type something else, you have instead of A, you write you return E, so it will give some compile time error, which you can solve during the compile time only. You have some logical errors, which means 2 plus 2 answer is 5, so you, have, you are dealing with some logical, logical problems. But if you are depending on user input, like you are expecting, uh, you are taking input from a file, so today it works because you have a file, Tomorrow, maybe your file is deleted, so it will, your code will try to open the file which is not there. So it will give some error. You have to handle those errors because those errors are called as runtime errors. And normally runtime errors goes for exceptions. So you have to handle those exceptions. So the topic is exceptional handling. Then you have this uh, collections. See, if you talk about arrays, uh, as you know, arrays, again, I have video, you can check it out. So arrays are collection, similar type of elements, so same elements, right? You can have int variables, you can have float variables, you can have arrays. So. But if you talk about collections, so collection is advanced part of array which provides you many features like you can have your uh, own data, you can have any type of data type in the same collections. You have this iterative options, you can expand your collection anytime. So collections are similar like arrays, but not exactly same difference. Okay. Then we have this generic types. So you can say, again, we will have video on generics, but simply generics is like, uh, if you want to restrict your user to, to give some specific type of data type, let's like suppose if you talk about collections, so that collection should only include integers. So you have to specify generics. If you have a collection that should be only su uh, support float, so you have to mention float, so that is generics. So this, this all comes under core Java, so you have this Java which comes which goes in two parts. So one is core Java, second is advanced Java. So if you talk about core Java, uh, this is your book, core Java. Now in advanced Java, again, depend upon uh, universities, depend, depend upon academic courses, we have different names, so some people say it says core Java, some say it's basic Java or some say programming in Java. But if you talk about the advanced part, normally we say it's an advanced Java because it deals with implementations. So in core Java, you learn concept, you know, you learn lots of concepts, this concept, that concept, you, you understand everything in Java. Then after that, once you're done with the basic course, you have to advance yourself so that you can create a software so that you can implement your concept in somewhere. And all, it all starts with a software platform. So you have two platforms normally. We have software platform, we have web platform. So if you talk about software platform, we have to work with Swing. So we have this concept of Swing, you can create a GUI. Because earlier when you talk about uh, Core Java, we have to work with CLI. So it's command line interface. Now we have to work with GUI. For that you require a concept called a Swing. Now in Swing, Possible, you, you will save some data in your database, so you, you require uh, database. So let's suppose MySQL. So you have MySQL. 
you have swing. So to connect swing with MySQL, you require JDBC. Again, I have a video. So you can see that. So you have this JDBC concept. So once you complete with swing and JDBC, you can create a GUI software. So you can do a freelancing job. Let's suppose uh, you want to create a software and you, you want to earn this too. Swing, J, uh, MySQL, JDBC, that's it. If you know these concepts, you can create a good software. But if you want to advance yourself for web thing, like if you want to create a websites, dynamic websites, again to create a website you require HTML, you require JavaScript, you require VBScript. So you can learn all those concepts on amazing uh, website college W3 school. school. But to learn uh, dynamic web so dynamic web programming in Java, you have this book. So this is what we talk about web components. So this is head first servlet and JSP. So using servlets you can create a dynamic website. Using JSP you can create a dynamic website. Again, then why two? Why servlet? Why JSP? With this book. Okay. So this normally goes with the web components. So we have that software com components, wing those parts. We have web components, servlet and JSP. Again, we have this advanced uh, version of JSP called a JSF. So you can also go for JSF. But if you want to go for some big software, if you want to work in industry as you, you are creating a huge software, enterprise, uh, enterprise level software, you can say, then you have to go for EJB. So it's enterprise Java bins. And seriously, if you know all this software, web, EJB, you are a Java programmer, you can create big applications. And seriously, in future, it will rock. It's also not rocking also, but in future it will rock because you have these clouds, you have to work with clouds, it works with Hadoop, then uh, big data. So all this come together to form, uh, to work with Java. So if you are a Java programmer, you have a bright future. So. Let me know if you have any doubts and please comment and make sure you subscribe for more videos. Thank you.